Hello and welcome to FPL Mate, your best mate for fantasy Premier League content for the 2020-21 season. My name is Dan and today I've got for you a captain's video for game week 30. Now I thought, you know, I haven't done a, a captain's video in a while, but... On this week, I've done a lot of research myself, a hell of a lot of research. I thought I may as well share it with you guys to try and help you make an informed decision of your very own. So we've got five captain picks today. I'm going to be ordering them from the fifth best right the way up to the best one for the game week. And hopefully, with this video, it can help you guys make the right decision. So I'm hoping I can get you covered today, guys. Hopefully, there'll be a player in here for you. Um, and I just say, let's just crack on. Let's just crack on. But before we do, please do leave a like on the video. It really, really helps the channel out and subscribe of course if you're not around here but yeah let's have a look at the fifth best option so my fifth best captain pick for the game week is Bruno Fernandes and I do have to say I would say this is the boring pick and let me first point out the reason why I can't put Bruno, Bruno any higher than sort of fifth on this list is kind of because Bryson Brighton are kind of the sticking point here. They're kind of still the second best defence in the league after Chelsea on expected goals conceded. They're just not conceding many chances. Not many people, you can't really get too many shots against them. Only 5.8 chances per game over the last five game weeks. Literally no team is conceding fewer shots than Brighton right now. So there's not a lot of shots going their way. Bruno, you would say, is not taking as much shots recently as well. I don't know, maybe that ties into it a little bit. And when you look at the actual amount of goals Brighton concede, it kind of makes them look a lot worse than they actually are. But then when you watch the, watch the kind of goals that Brighton do concede, it's usually like, you know, a dodgy corner goal or something like that. Maybe a stupid wonder goal. You remember the, the ones against Crystal Palace, these wonder goals that were scored against Brighton. You kind of feel maybe they were a bit unlucky. But the fact is that Brighton just don't give up a lot of opportunities, but teams do still find a way of sneaking one goal past them. Two goals, absolute max, but it's never more than that. And do you know who likes sneaking FPL points more than anyone else? Well, it's Bruno. Bruno Fernandes. He's the point sneaker, the point assassin. Now, I think it's pretty safe to say the Bruno is a penalty merchant at this point. I'm not trying to be offensive or anything like that. Half of his goals are penalties. Half of his expected goals are from penalties. And the two goals he scored in his last five Premier League games both penalties. Now, remember guys, this is no criticism. In FPL, we like penalty merchants. They give us an extra output, an extra bonus way of getting those points. Brighton, have conceded eight penalties this season. Only Liverpool and Leeds have conceded more than them this season. So if there's such thing as targeting a team for penalties, I guess this is not a bad way to start. If there's a such way of, you know, targeting a team based on the fact that they concede unlucky goals, maybe you might think that Bruno is the player who can get, uh, you know, a fortunate goal or something like that. In many ways, that might be a good matchup. But many, many casual players... FPL players who don't put as much research and stuff, often they will just captain Bruno every single game week, which makes Bruno a very safe captain pick. Because if it goes wrong, it's unlikely that that's going to damage your rank very much since so many other people will be in the same boat as captaining Bruno as well. I, however, would not be picking Bruno personally as I don't really like relying on penalties for points and I quite rate right Brighton as well. Plus, there are some really good differential captain opportunities this week and I've got a big one for you next, guys. So my number four is Marcus Alonso and if you're lucky enough to have Alonso in your team, you have the game week's ultimate high risk, high reward captain. I love this captain pick. I've got huge respect for anyone who will be going for it. That doesn't necessarily mean it's a sensible pick, though. In fact, you could consider this a very unsensible captain pick. You're probably watching this video thinking, Dan, you've gone crazy. You've gone crazy, man. But believe me, guys, believe me. This is not as crazy as it sounds. Let me try and justify this shout for you and, then, and kind of look at the facts a little bit. So Chelsea, they have a crazy defensive record since Tuchel came in. And they pretty much keep a clean sheet every single game. West Brom, on the other hand, are the third worst attack in the league on recent form, according to those underlying stats. And in terms of actual goals scored, well, West Brom are the joint worst with Sheffield United with only just one goal scored in that five, last five games. Even that one goal was a, a you know, kind of a dodgy corner header. So a clean sheet is stupidly likely for Chelsea in this game. So that's kind of like six points on the board already as an absolute minimum. Now, let's talk about some catch, uh, attacking contributions. When we're thinking about attacking contributions from Chelsea, you're probably thinking of players like Werner, Mount, maybe Havertz have a better chance of scoring or assisting than Alonso. Now, I'm not even convinced that that's true. So here is where Alonso ranks amongst the Chelsea players per appearance. So this is when Alonso plays under Tuchel 
since Tuchel come, come, uh, took over in the Premier League, where does Alonso rank? Well, he's second for shots per appearance after Werner, with, with uh, over two shots per game. So he's taken a lot of shots, more than anyone else when he does play, other than Timo Werner. He's third for shots in the box per appearance with 1.67. He's third for key passes after Ziyech and Mount. He's first for big chances created with one every other appearance. He's got the highest expected assists at Chelsea, uh, high ex expected points per appearance other than Zuma, who's only played twice. When he's on the pitch, he is expected to be involved in 25% of Chelsea's goals. Now, you hear those stats, and to me, it's pretty obvious. If Alonso starts, he is, to me, Chelsea's best asset. Literally the best asset. He has the highest chance of a haul. He only needs a goal, and suddenly we're looking at 14, 15 points because of the clean sheet and the extra points defenders get for scoring, plus all the bonus. The question is then, will he start? He doesn't play every game after all. He's far from nailed. How do we know he's going to play? Well, I'm predicting that Alonso is going to play in this game against West Brom based on a few factors. So, Alonso seems to play versus teams with uh, a weaker or at least a non-aggressive attack. We know he's a bit of a defensive liability, so this makes sense. Uh, Alonso is a tall player, so that will give Chelsea the necessary height when defending those set pieces. That's one of West Brom's few attacking outlets. Alonso is the only Chelsea left back who did not play over the international break, which means he is the most fresh and fully rested of those players players who could play in the left wing back position and if he doesn't play well the chances are he won't come off the bench either so out of the six times Alonso has been on the bench this season in all competitions he has only come off the bench once if he doesn't come off the bench then your captaincy will just switch to your vice captain and it's happy days no harm done so for all these reasons what a time to buy and captain Alonso for a one week punt so what is it that's putting me off why is he only on fourth well, it's a terrifying captain pick. It's a truly terrifying captain pick because so many things can go wrong. Although these things are unlikely to go wrong, there are a few things that can very much go wrong. Uh, you know, unlucky goals being conceded, benchings, one-pointers, yellow cards. It's kind of far scarier captaining a uh, defender. And I don't know... You know, from a mental point of view, it's the first game in the in the in the in the game week 30 as well. I don't know if I've got the guts personally, but hats off to you guys if you have got the guts to go for Alonso. My number three pick is Patrick Bamford, and I'd say this is a captain pick you could go for if you want to be a little bit different, but not massively different. Bamford has given us kind of some mixed performances recently, but over the course of the season, he's just been a superstar. He's kind of the second highest scoring forward after Kane, the fifth highest point scorer overall, which is just crazy. Yes, he hasn't blown anyone away recently, but I get the impression that that's got to, a lot to do with lack of opportunity. So in his fast, past five games, he's had two blanks, uh, and uh, three blanks and two goals. The two goals were against Southampton and Fulham, where he actually got those goal scoring opportunities. The three blanks that he had were against Villa, West Ham and Chelsea. Tough opponents where he didn't really have many chances to score. We kind of know what Bamford is like by now. He's not one of those clinical players like a Bamiang or Son who will only have one or two high quality chances per game to score. He's more of a player, you know, he, he'll have a lot of opportunities that Leeds will generate for him and he will finish off many of those nicely, but he does require a lot of those, you know, opportunities to score. For example, in the past five game weeks, he's had 13 shots. Only three of those have been on target and he's got two goals. Give him more opportunities and he will score more points, which kind of brings us to Sheffield United, a team that will afford him those many opportunities that we, we really need. So over the past five game weeks, Sheffield United have conceded the most uh, shots of any team 16.2 shots they've conceded per game that's a lot concede the most big chances 4.4 big chances per game that's huge they've got by far the highest expected goals conceded at 2.62 per game and of course they're conceding two goals per game on average too and they're overperforming their expected stats i guess so the worst defence in the league is still the worst, despite the fact that they're statistically overperforming. They do seem to be getting a little bit worse too. They've kind of lost their manager. They seem doomed to get relegated. It's all looking a bit doom and gloom uh, at Sheffield United, to be fair. And I really feel like Leeds versus Sheffield United is the fixture to target in this particular game week. It could be a huge score. Uh, you know, a player like Bamford, he's going to be involved in, in goals if there are goals. I do expect him to play, even if he's not 100% fit. If does look incredibly likely now that he is going to start and play. I'm not really worried about that at all. Seems like a pretty safe bet to me, but there is one guy who is even safer than Bamford. 
So my number two pick is Harry Kane. I think Harry Kane is kind of the ultimate safe pick for this game week. I think he'll be the most captained player amongst the higher ranking FPL managers and kind of for good reason as well. So he's a premium player. He's had a, he's having a fantastic season. He's got a really good fixture against Newcastle. Well, Newcastle are quite rubbish at the moment. You don't really need to look too hard or think about this too hard to see this is a pretty good captain pick, right? So Kane is shooting more than any other player in the Premier League over the past five game weeks by quite some some margin. He's kind of got the most shots on target, the most shots in the box, the highest expected goals. He's on penalties. He's nailed for 90 minutes every game. He's got a, a bit of creativity in him too, to be fair. What a pick. Absolute shoe in surely. Well, there are some slight downsides to the Kane pick. Now, his point ceiling probably isn't monstrously high this game week. Newcastle are bad. They're the fifth worst defence right now, according to expected goals conceded. They've conceded the sixth most shots over the past five game weeks, but some of the goals they've conceded have been a bit unlucky, uh, like the ones versus Brighton, for example, and typically they're not a team to concede too many goals because even when they they do go one or two goals down, they just keep defending. They've, they've kind of got no desire to be aggressive in attack or try and turn a game around by taking the game to the opposition. Similarly, Spurs under Mourinho, they've got this uh, kind of ve very pragmatic ideology as well. So they can score one or two goals and then have no interest in scoring anymore. You know, one or two goals for Spurs, that's enough. We're done. We've secured the win. Let's just defend it. See the game out. Done. Right? And I just kind of can't see Spurs putting Newcastle to the sword and scoring three or four goals, to be honest. And when we're looking at the high ceiling captains, we kind of think, okay, can this player feasibly get two or three returns? With Kane, two is definitely possible. And, you know, we'd all be very happy with two goals or two goal contributions as well. But I do think the ceiling is kind of there. But I also think the floor is pretty high as well. I can't see Kane ending this game week without a goal contribution. And even if he scores low, so many other players will have Captain Kane anyway. This, again, it's not really going to have a negative effect on your rank. So I see this as a super safe pick, a really good pick, a really sensible pick, even if technically players like Alonso, Bamford and my final pick as well might have slightly higher ceilings so let's talk about that final pick uh, in my opinion the best pick and the player that I'm going to be captain in in game week 30. So the number one is Rafinha, the best pick in my opinion. I'm just the biggest Rafinha fanboy right now. You guys will know this. I just think he's excellent. He's a joy to watch. He's kind of the star of this attacking Leeds team. He always wants the ball, always looking to create. He's on set pieces. He's always available for passes. He's not afraid to take on a one-on-one. -on -one. It's kind of the full package. And honestly, this game against Sheffield United is going to make him look like prime Ronaldinho. I've spoken about how bad Sheffield United are already in this video. So I won't go over it again, but I will try and back up why Rafinha is the one to go for with some stats. So over the past five game weeks, Rafinha is number one for key passes of all Premier League players with an insane 21, 21 key passes. So for reference, KDB is second with 15 key passes. He's uh, Rafinha is number two for big chances created with five big chances created. He's number one for expected assists with 3.05. I know he hasn't actually got any assists, but you kind of feel he has been, a, uh, I, I want to say a little bit unlucky, but he's been incredibly unlucky not to get more assists. And those assists will come very, very soon. He's number three for shots with 15. So that might surprise you. Literally only Kane and KDB have taken more shots than Rafinha over the last five game weeks. You didn't expect that, did you? And he's second for shots in the box as well, behind literally only Kane. So he is shooting a lot. Now, although, you know, he is kind of shooting a lot, often those aren't high quality chances. But still, when we're talking about going for a Leeds player and picking who to go for, it's really out of Bamford and Rafinha when we're talking about captains, isn't it? And what Rafinha offers is a similar goal scoring output to Bamford, but with an infinitely bigger creative output. And then, of course, You've got to consider that midfielders, they get an extra point for a goal. You know, you get that extra point for a clean sheet, which looks relatively likely against Sheffield United. All in all, Rafinha is kind of ticking all of the boxes for me. And if you have him and you're prepared to go slightly away from the more popular picks like Kane and Bruno, I think your bravery could really be rewarded here, especially as... Rafinha is nowhere near as highly owned as Kane and Bruno. So it's a real opportunity for you guys. I think you could be rewarded. So he'll be my captain, that's for sure. 
But guys, you're going to have to let me know who you're thinking of captain. Is there anyone on this list you like or is there anyone you think I have missed out today? Who are you going for? Love to know. Leave your comment in the comment section. Of course, like this video if you did find it helpful in any way and do subscribe if you're new around here too. But yeah, thanks for watching guys. Please check out my Twitter, Instagram, join me on Mini League, whatever. All those links are in the description. It'd be nice to chat to you over there. I'm sorry from that, guys. Thank you for watching. And I'll see you later, mates. Bye-bye.